Today's episode is an expert stack. That's what I'm gonna call it when I do, I think I'll do some more of these because now that we have over 200 episodes, I find myself recommending episodes to people on this topic and that topic and that topic. And I've got like five different experts on the same topic that I want them to listen to. So we thought it would be cool if we could combine a certain topic with all these different experts sharing the highlights from each of those episodes. So we're gonna kick this off today all about female hormones. So talking about anything from hormones declining in perimenopause to insulin sensitivity and high blood sugar and blood sugar dysregulation that can happen as a result of hormones, perimenopause, et cetera. Adrenal fatigue, what's the deal with coffee, yay or nay? Um, fasting, how do we do it? Is that appropriate? When is it? When is it not? Blood sugar regulation and tracking that with continuous glucose monitors and also talking about the importance of slowing down, especially as we approach menopause. So the experts that we have for our stack today are Dr. Anna Kabeca, Dr. Mindy Pels, Catherine Safieri, and Mariah Brown. So we will go ahead and get into it. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, Dr. Anna, so give us the scoop. Can you please give the women, the low down on hormones. This is, you know, the, probably the biggest question that I get as a coach, and I can't wait for them to hear your perspective. Can you tell women what is going on with our hormones? Oh man, you know, it is, it's complex. We're beautifully complex, intricate creatures. We absolutely are. And it's a really interesting cycle. And I, as a gynecologist, right, I trained as a gynecologist and I'm trained in hormones and age management and uh, expert in bioidentical hormones. But this is what I would say. It takes more than hormones to fix our hormones because we are so complex. And, and this is where the importance of lifestyle really comes in with whatever diet plan we're on. But as we're aging, our hormones are certainly fluctuating. We know on a monthly basis, our hormones will fluctuate. Mm -hmm. And as, um, as we age, like we reach peak levels of our adrenal hormones, such as DHEA sulfate in the blood, if we're looking at it, but our adrenal hormone DHEA, that starts to peak in our 20s and starts to decline by the end of our 20s and early 30s for sure in both men and women. And progesterone starts to decline more significantly in our mid to late 30s. And this is our mother hormone, pro-gestation, like pro-life pro-birth. And it is the hormone that, you know, the second half of our cycle, which we call our luteal phase, it it naturally dips if we don't become pregnant around cycle day 28 to 32, depending on your menstrual cycle. And, you know, you have your menstruation after that decline in progesterone. And so this is how it's designed. But progesterone has receptors all over our body. It's in both men and women. So technically it has the wrong name. And it's all, there are also receptors in our brain, in our bones, in our breast that can actually be progesterone, very protective and rebuilding, rebuilding on a cellular level. And um, there's a lot to progesterone. It's also the precursor for our stress hormone, cortisol, and many other hormones as well, downline being DHEA and testosterone and estrogen, all from our mother hormones. And these are all derived from fat from cholesterol, healthy fats in our body. So as we hit our, you know, progesterone starts to decline in our mid to late 30s, and then we have a um, decline in estrogen and testosterone that follows as well. But what's happening as a gynecologist, these are things that happen. Like in our mid 30s, a client comes into my office and says, Dr. Anna, I have PMS symptoms. I have irritability. I have some breakthrough bleeding of my cycle or my cr I'm having more cramps. And so, so I would, you know, like the standard care would be, okay, well, let's put you on a birth control pill and or Prozac those two weeks of that cycle, or we can just put you on it every day if you're having anxiety or depressive issues other times. But for PMS, we typically do it just during that luteal phase, the two weeks before you start bleeding. And so then the patient comes back in in her 40s and she's like, you know, Dr. Ann, I'm still having breakthrough bleeding. I don't like how I feel. I have zero sex drive. Of course, the pill will knock out your sex drive. I have zero sex drive and um, having difficulty sleeping, waking up in the middle of the night. And can you help me? I'm like, okay, well, we can really fix your period. Let's do an endometrial ablation and or a... Um, 
hysterectomy and let's just stop these problems right now, right? You don't want any more children, so let's just take everything out. You won't have to worry about uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. We'll take the ovaries while we're there, even though they're just fine. And so then the situation happens. Well, she comes back, you know, I have no libido. I'm still waking up in the middle of the night and having a hard time with memory and brain fog. And you're like, well, let me tell you, I've done everything I can as a gynecologist, but I want to refer you to your next best specialist. Here's my favorite psychiatrist. And by the way, here's a divorce attorney. <laughs> you know, it's terrible, right? But Seriously. as I learned in my system and like in my practice and through my own trauma and troubles with my menstrual cycle, as I got to my un the underlying reasons, like that patient coming in now in her mid thirties or earlier at any stage when PMS symptoms, it's like, okay, we detox you. No white, no wheat, no sweet, very little red meat. And basically if you can pick it, peel it, fish it, hunt it, milk it, grow it, then for the most part, you can eat it, right? We want to get to whole foods that look like food, avoid the center aisles, and then let's support our body, a supplement that I I created for myself out of my journey around the world, working with healers. I put them on that Mighty Maca Plus, which is a 30 superfood combination, have them take an omega-3 fish oil, probably need a probiotic, and before too long, add on some bioidentical progesterone. And I went from doing two to three surgeries a week early in my career to only needing to do two to three per year. Okay. I want to hit a little bit more. You mentioned stress with women and how like we can have you know, so let's say maybe they're doing this, um, this approach to keto and they're like, I feel like I'm being really healthy and I'm doing all those things, but things are still going wrong. How have you seen stress affect hormones and what, what do you recommend for people to do to be able to deal with their stress and get out of this hole that they're in? Right, right. And especially now to like having the early onset of the pandemic and the quarantine that we have mm -hmm. been through that we notice the high levels of cortisol break down our natural healthy boundaries, right? Willpower, we may start eating things that we haven't eaten in years, craving things, thinking things. Um, and that is that is a result of cortisol. I would say cortisol is the thief that comes to rob and steal from you. And, and it absolutely does. It's, you know, often in, in short, short amounts and at, on an as needed basis, it is there to save us and protect us. But too much, too long, it is unruly and will create chaos in our bodies. And especially with our reproductive hormones, our bodies will make cortisol over estrogen and testosterone and DHEA, right? So we, I think understanding that is really fascinating. It's really eye-opening for me. And it's been this concept of discovery, but even more so when cortisol goes up and it's up for a while, oxytocin goes down, the hormone of love bonding and connection. And when cortisol is mm -hmm. up for too long, our paraventricular nucleus area in the brain will suppress cortisol production. And we get this dangerous state where it's low cortisol and low oxytocin. And so what does that feel like? That feels like disconnection. Like, I love my husband, but I don't feel love for him. Mm -hmm. I love my work. I don't feel love for work. I don't mm -hmm. want to go in anymore. I'm burnt out. I was just at my gynecologist's office today. He's retiring. He says, you know, Anna, it's just not the way it used to be. He goes, you know, all I deal with is paperwork and EMRs and fighting insurance company. He goes, you know, the, that's, that's just a complete change in medicine. He's been practicing for 50 years. You know, lovely, lovely old man. And, um, it, it just, you know, that kind of stress, like he, he's burnt out. He mm -hmm. finally he could, he would be practicing till he died. He loves it. Mm -hmm. Right. But he's completely burnt out. And that's, that's cortisol. That is stress. You know, that is like when we are struggling day after day. And that, that is a result of this cortisol oxytocin disconnect. Now I would say, I want it all to be about progesterone. And I'm all about, you know, I, I use bioidentical DHEA. It's in my Jolva formula for, for our lady feminine bits, right? To help with, you know, vaginal dryness and orgasm and, and, you know, clitoral health and also incontinence. And then my progesterone cream. So using bioidentical progesterone and, and pregnenolone, another option or prescribed by our physician in an oral form. Those are precursor hormones, right? And that those are very, very beneficial hormones. We want to dial those in and then estrogen and testosterone uh, and as needed. So, that as we're in their menopause and beyond menopause. And sometimes in the perimenopause, absolutely, we need additional support. But beyond that, it's really about these major hormones, insulin, 
and cortisol and oxytocin that rule and master our lives and also our waistline our energy level, our moods, and and those these are the critical hormones. Coffee could be a you know could be one of those things that keep us from success and keep us adrenally depleted, and we just have to stop it when it's doing that to our bodies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I'm a big fan. I was just talking to my coaching ladies about this morning. Like, you know, try maybe green tea or um, yerba mate. They have like chai versions of mate, which is a little bit lower in caffeine. See if maybe you could, if you still want that, you know, experience with your butter and your coconut oil and all that in the morning, you know, do something that's maybe a little bit reduced or possibly even decaf. Um, and that is like, even I had an Uber driver once who was diabetic that was telling me that he found out that coffee was, even black coffee was just astronomically. Um, rising his blood sugar. So it is something for us to think about when we're in that ketogenic state. And then also um, Dr. James Nicolantonio has a book called The Salt Fix, where he also talks about how, you know, coffee is a diuretic and it also can deplete us of more salt. So if you're on that ketogenic diet and you're cranking the coffee all day long, you may be doing yourself a huge disservice on your adrenals in the long run, because now you're putting yourself in this high adrenaline state you're also depleting salt that you're not getting back in in a, in a condition where you're already likely to be depleting salt faster. As estrogen declines, as you go through perimenopause, you become more insulin resistant. So when you hear women go, I just can't lose weight like I used to before, my old tricks aren't working, that's estrogen right. going down yeah. and in, you're becoming more insulin resistant. So you're gonna have to learn to fast. You got to yep. compress your eating window and get more fasting time. Yep. That was, that was like the first thing I learned. Second thing is you're going to have to go keto. You got to, you, you got to know when to go keto. And then you got to know when to do the opposite of that, which is eat foods that are high, higher in glucose that build progesterone. Mm-hmm. So I came up with something I call the fasting cycle, which was built around the menstrual cycle. And, mm-hmm. um, this is actually a lot of what brought my cycle back into balance where mm-hmm. the first three weeks of your cycle, you are going keto, but the week before your period, you're not going keto. You're actually yeah. stepping out of keto because in order yeah. to make progesterone, you got to have glucose and insulin high. Right. So, and I've actually seen people's uh, symptoms get worse by not allowing that their body's craving it. Please eat carbs. And they're like, no. And then they like, don't have periods. These are women who normally do. And you like they, their, their brain fog goes up, everything tanks. So I love that approach. You know what? At, at 45, that was one of my last pieces was the keto variation at 45. I did a Dutch test on myself and it showed that my hormones were worse than a postmenopausal woman. They were totally wow. tanked. But if you looked at me, you would have been like, oh my God, you're fit. You, you know, you don't have to worry about weight, but I had done so much fasting and so much keto. I just tanked all those sex hormones. Yeah. So yeah. I had to bring back the, right. the hormone building foods. Yeah. Diet variation is my middle name. So I love <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, Important. so that was the second one. Okay. The third one, and this one is also really simple, but why aren't women talking about this? We have a whole set of bacteria in our gut. I call it the estrobilome and Mm. it breaks estrogen down. So if you're a woman that's been on antibiotics a lot, if you've been on the birth control pill for decades, Mm -hmm. your gut is most likely deficient of these bacteria that break estrogen down. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't a vegetable eater at 35, that might've been okay. But at 45, you're not getting as much estrogen as you used to. So you've got to break that estrogen down so you can utilize it. So mm-hmm. up your green leafy vegetables, up your, your prebiotic your, or your polyphenol foods. Like you got to feed those bacteria in a big mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. So great so point. That, yeah. So that was my third one. And then fourth was detox. I, I literally went through my house one day and like got rid of all toxic um, beauty right. products, shampoos, cleaners. Um, and I started detoxing and, and that was actually what brought my sleep back. Mm. It really started getting me sleeping again. And then the last one it's to coin Libby Weaver's um, statement is rushing woman syndrome. I'm still working on that one, but you just like, you can't do that type a overachiever does yeah. not work at 45. Yeah. Even at 38, I'm, I'm like in this mode where I did that. I did for the last couple 
you know, year and a half I was grinding and I'm like, I won't, I won't live like that. Like if my yeah. lifestyle, whatever I'm trying to achieve requires me to be in adrenal overdrive, that that's, that's a lifestyle problem, not a me problem. I'm not yeah. living like that. And yeah, it's, it's it, boundaries. I feel like is super important on that is like saying yeah. no, even though that sounds really exciting and really cool. And I want to, and I want to help everybody. And I want to, I have to, I will burn out. So yeah, yeah. I love you, that point. You know what I did on that one? Cause this is a, a hard one for me. I, Cause I love life. I like right. to do it all. Right. So if somebody invites me somewhere, I want to do it all. So I had to like make a, a promise to myself that Friday after two o'clock into Friday evening and Sunday after two o'clock into Sunday evening was a no time. You invited yeah. me to anything during that time. Yes. I love that. Nine out of 10 times I was going to say no. But then what it did to my brain on Thursday, when Thursday was hard, I was like, oh, just get to Friday because you got a whole afternoon. You can sit and watch a Netflix series. You can right. do whatever you want. So yep. it gave me permission to rest. Yeah, I love that. Like I currently, like I, my calendar scheduler is not available at all on Mondays or Fridays Perfect. because it gives me this barrier to like ease into my week and create yep. and come out without just being bogged down on calls and interviews yep. all day long. And even, you know, I'm a, I I'm divorced and have four kids and I have to be oh protective gosh. over travel. Cause I love networking events. It's just yep. like, it's a fun party. I want to go to everything. And yep. I realize that if I travel all the time on the weeks. I don't have my kids. I go from like chaotic travel. I'm feeling behind on things to kids and football and sports and blah, just straight back to travel. And I'm like, mm -mm, I yep. need and demand for myself that time to just like chill and not have yeah. any fast pace. So I love, I mean, I think that's important yeah. for a lot of people, but I know that women, I think it's like, especially when you get people like us who are, we're like, feel called and have mm -hmm. this like mission. And then on top of it, we love fun. Yeah. Uh oh, watch and out. People, we love <laughs> right. people. So it's like, okay, wh it, what's the harm in not saying no. But what I realize is if you put a bunch of yeses together week after week, yeah, you yeah. don't feel so good. You're saying no to your own self piece for That's sure. Right. And let's backtrack to the cleaning out the toxins in your home and let's sh sh shift gears into toxins. And, you know, I think it's getting somewhat popular. I'd say it, uh, just being real, probably more amongst like the affluent crowd, maybe Perhaps. hasn't true socioeconomically. I feel like the more, uh, affluent people kind of have all the detail, you know, the healthy soaps and the water filters and all of these things. And I think there is a little bit of a socioeconomic barrier there, but I do think that there's quite a few people that are just like, does it really matter? Does it really matter if you have like whatever Dawn soap and Irish Springs soap bars and, right. you know, do you really need to filter your tap water? So can you educate your perspective yeah. on those things. Yeah, it's it's I'm so happy you said that because one of the things I love about fasting is it's free. It's yeah. it's time efficient so you it crosses all socioeconomic yep. uh, barriers. And I think we need to take each lifestyle that would help a woman or help anybody and they need to be it needs to be doable and inexpensive. Right. Otherwise that's not cool like if being healthy means you have to have money. I do not like that. Right. There needs to be health advice that is able, people are able to put into action that exactly. doesn't cost anything. Totally. So, yeah. So, um, this is the interesting thing about those, that 40 year old range in the perimenopausal years is this toxic bucket really comes into play. So when you're born, you are born with a size of toxins, a bucket size that you can genetically hold. So you may have been born with a really big bucket size and you can handle a lot of toxins. And I may have been born with a very small bucket size. I can't handle very many yeah. toxic, uh, uh, toxins at all. You get your mother's toxic load. So go and look at your mother and she got her mother. So you can look at your grandmother, you can look at your siblings, but the, whatever, like if your mother has Alzheimer's, your grandmother has Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is proven to be a toxic issue of the brain it's time to do some detoxing. You need to yeah. look at the generation ahead of you to understand what that toxic bucket is. Mm -hmm. Thyroid problems, that's a toxic bucket problem. But why it catches up in menopause is that when your hormones do this ramp, this real up and down, that signals any toxins that have been stored in our tissues to come out. So for example, lead, mm -hmm. lead is stored in the bones. 
So as the hormones are swinging in the perimenopausal years, lead gets dumped into the system and it goes up into the brain. Wow. And when it goes up into the brain, what it feels like is you say, gosh, I, do, I just don't remember things like I used to. Or you're in a conversation and you're talking to somebody and you're like, uh, uh, what was I saying? Mm -hmm. Or you walk into a room and you're like, why did I walk in here? Mm -hmm. Those are all signs that the neurons in your brain are not transmitting information as efficiently. And a lot of times that comes from lead. So mm -hmm. The first thing I tell menopausal women is you're not going crazy. There has been a, a hormonal shift. And at the root of that is a toxic dump that has happened in your body. So now let's clean it up. And the easiest way to do it, the, the app I like is called the Think Dirty app or um, Skin Deep. Do you know those apps? I don't. Oh, they're easy. So you take your phone and, and listening to this podcast, you could literally do this after the podcast. You download Think Dirty, that's my favorite one, and go and scan all your beauty products, scan all oh. your cleaners, your detergents, scan everything in your house. And anything that scores like in the red, it gives you like a yellow red, green, yellow, nice. red, anything that's in a yellow red, either throw it out or when you're done with it, replace it with something that's easier, that's less toxic. What an amazing resource. Right? So you don't have to know every single little chemical no. name and like become this yeah. toxin specialist. That's awesome. That's a great yeah. tip. Thank yeah. you. And then cost wise on that, um, you know, who has a great book on homemade um, uh, formulas for uh, cleaners and things like that is uh, Wellness Mama. Nice. She, yeah. she put She's, out a book. I, I turn to her book a lot. Like when I want to clean something, I look up a formula and I just make it in my own home and nice. it's less expensive and non-toxic. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Awesome resources. And then, yep. you know, what about, um, dryer sheets, water? Yeah. Let's talk about water and air. You know, what are your yeah. thoughts on that for people? Well, so, so when the, the OB said to me, you, you know, I have a practice full of women. My first thought was what's in our environment. So here's where the toxic bucket comes into handle or comes into place. If you have a very full bucket and you have a very small ability right. to handle toxins and you've got a fragrant dryer sheet and it mm -hmm. might be that one thing that just tips your right. bucket, whereas right. another person has no problem. So like for me, I don't do well with fragrances. Um, in fact, I would encourage everybody to avoid like the air fresheners, the fragrant dryer sheets, the toxic perfumes, because they're high in, in phthalates and phthalates are proven to lower testosterone. So for the menopausal woman, that your, your testosterone is already declining. You don't need any extra help in the area of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting those out really makes a difference. Yeah. I love this talk about like the toxic load. And I always look to nature, right? I'm always, all of the health advice we give, I'm always looking at, you know, if we were just dropped into the planet and we were living in this nice abundance, you know, garden -y area with fresh water and fish and all these things, like how is our world currently different than that? And is our body capable of handling that much change that quickly? Cause like, I mean, the industrial revolution wasn't that long ago. No, I no. remember when there was no internet. So this no. is new. A lot no. of this stuff is new to our bodies. And so if we look at it, that it's just like minimizing, I I'm hearing from you, like let's minimize as much toxic overload as possible. Like right. it's going to happen. You're right. going to eat something at a restaurant at some point that has like refined seed oils, or, you know, you're going to breathe smoggy air. So let's yep. try to just minimize it as much yep. as we can. And that's such a great resource. Thank you for I, sharing that. Yeah. I mean, the number one rule to detox is stop toxifying yourself. Like, <laughs> like that's the first right. place to go. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I can, we can go into really fancy ways to detox that are more expensive, but let's right. start by just not the detoxifying basics. yourself. Okay. Let's move over into fasting a little bit. Cause you know, yeah. some, some people still like, don't, they're like, they're, they feel unsure of themselves. And now granted, I, I, I'm not disrespecting your work. Cause you have so much oh, value, no, but no, I like I to just... joke with people. Cause they're like, how do you fast? I'm like, you don't eat. How do you That's break a fast? You eat, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, obviously there's way more bigger ways to optimize right. and things to be aware of, but I like yeah. to give people a yeah. hard time. Cause there's all this unsure, you know, I don't know how to do it or what to do or what's the best way to do it. 
and you obviously, this is your specialty. So you have ways to optimize. So I would love to talk about, if you don't mind talking about like dry fasting versus, Oh, you want to start with dry fasting. We'll we'll, we'll get there. (laughs) Let's go into the heart. Let's talk length of time, you know, length of time and then how to, you know, best, best approaches I'd say, um, mentally and also physically on how to approach fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so great question. And I'm laughing because I'm like, oh, there, there are people that don't know about fasting where I don't, I don't get those people. <laughs> so yet. foreign to you. <laughs> yeah. yeah I get questions. To they're like, I think I'm going to try it. I never have before, yeah. you know, so they're out there. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. So we want to reach those people. So here's what I would say. If you're nervous about fasting, the first thing I want you to think about is that you are the same human body, same eyes, same ears, same gut, same liver, same spleen. Everything in your body is exactly the same as the cave people. And when we were in the cave people days, we walked out of the cave. We didn't have refrigeration. We didn't have a pantry and we are programmed for survival. We didn't have fake food that lasted on your shelves for, you know, 20 years. So we had to go hunt for food. So we are internally wired to thrive without food. Like I'm not right. Because if we didn't thrive, if we got worse as we fasted, we wouldn't, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking. The human species would not have continued. So you're going to, when you start to fast, you're going to work with your biology for the first time. You are not working against it. You are working with it. And you are going to discover what I call healing switches inside your body that you cannot discover through food. I don't care how great yep. the food is. Yep. You cannot discover these switches with it. The only way to get to them is to fast. Yep. So that's the first thing for the people that are nervous. The second thing is the longer you fast, the more these switches get turned on. And I'll go through kind of the, there's yes. six of them that awesome. I really like. So the first is 13 to 15 hours. You start to go from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. So instead of using glucose for energy, you're now going to switch your body over into fat and your body is going to burn fat. This is why so many people love fasting for weight loss, because for the first time, they're getting to the weight around their hips, to the mm-hmm. weight around their belly. They're, they're, the body is going after the areas where it stored extra sugar years ago. And, and this yeah. is what's so brilliant about our body is it goes, oh, okay, it's been about 14 hours, food hasn't come in. So I, I remember I stored some food a while ago and I stored it in fat. I'm gonna go burn that. Yeah. So it burns fat and in the process of burning fat, it makes a, a, a product that hopefully everybody's heard about a, a byproduct called ketones. Mm-hmm. When you start making ketones, ketones go up into the brain and turn off the hunger hormone. So the more you fast, the less hungry you will be. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. and if you haven't done it, you're like, this doesn't make sense. It may, once you experiment with it, you will feel amazing. Now, ketones do two things, uh, well, outside to turn off the hunger hormone. They will upgrade a a neurotransmitter called GABA. So you will feel less hungry. You will feel calm. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing they do is any neurons in your brain that might be degenerating from toxins or too much sugar over the years, Western diet, they regenerate those. So this is why I want everybody fasting. Right. So that's at just 13 to 15 hours. At 17 hours, you hit something called autophagy. Again, our bodies are so well designed that what happens when you hit autophagy is this intelligence inside every flipping cell in your body goes, okay, we don't have any sugar coming in. We better clean up our act. And that it starts to clean up injured um, DNA, injured mitochondria, injured, injured endoplastic reticulum. If there's a virus in there, it will shut down replication of a virus, which is wow. incredibly important for this moment in time. Yeah. If you have fungus, if you're dealing with candida, it pushes out candida. Wow. It is incredible. And that starts at 17 hours. Mm. At 24 hours, your gut goes, okay, we haven't had a lot of food in here. I'm going to repair so that when food comes in, I'm a healthier 
uh, mucosal lining is what really gets repaired. So mm -hmm. any leaky gut, any candida, any parasites, you all of a sudden start repairing the inside of your gut. So those things can't live there easily. And you, any, and leaky gut is like a big deal right now because of all of glyphosate and pesticides mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's a 24. 36, what happens is your body goes, okay, it's been a long time now. Now I, st I remember storing some sugar around my liver. you I remember extra fat in, in other areas and you will start to burn fat like crazy at 36 hours. And remember again, all of this is for your survival. So you could go find food Right at 48 hours. The brain goes, okay, we need to really go look for food. So we are going to increase the dopamine pathway. So it opens up receptor sites so that dopamine can, you can receive dopamine better. So you are alert, you mm -hmm. are happy. So you go find that darn food. It also will spin off some antioxidants to slow the aging process down 48 hours. And then the Mac daddy is 72. The body's so brilliant. It's like, we need to reboot the whole immune system. So we don't, we don't die. We don't get an infection and die. And so old white blood cells get, uh, get like destroyed and new white blood cells get emerge. And that's, 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 that's the beautiful. timeline. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Crazy, I want to just right? save that little snippet. So we can just, <laughs> I just keep it on my website. Just go to Mindy. So yeah, there, that, that's how it works. So can you speak on salt and electrolytes? If you're going to do something extended, like a 72 hour fast? Yeah. Yeah. So this was kind of my biggest, like aha in doing this is how many people in the world are mineral deficient. And so much of that is coming from our poor conventional farming. Uh, you know, any farm that is a conventional farm that's been monocrop doesn't have a lot of, of minerals in it. They're now saying that, you know, bro like the broccoli we buy at the supermarket right. is, has less vitamins and minerals than, than it did 10 years ago. Right. So if you're going to experience experiment with fasting, no, you, you probably are mineral deficient. And why this is important for fasters is that as you start to fast, if you're already mineral deficient, you know, you're not eating. So less minerals are coming in even more. And you can notice things like hair loss. You can notice heart palpitations. And then you stop fasting, thinking it's a problem with fasting. And really it's just a mineral deficiency. When you're taking in carbohydrate, the body breaks it down into that smallest little building block of glucose. The glucose enters your bloodstream and the body senses it and goes, oh, wait, okay, great. We better produce some insulin, right? And then the insulin acts as a key. It unlocks the cell. It allows the glucose to enter and then the body uses it up, right? That's when everything is working perfectly and your body recognizes and produces the right amount of insulin. Everything gets ferried away, used up, bing, bang, boom. We're good to go, right? When we're going off the rails and things aren't working as well, we, we can see insulin in, uh, insensitivity, right? Where we're just not recognizing that key isn't unlocking the cells and your glucose is floating around your bloodstream, floating around your bloodstream. Right. And so what we see is estrogen really promotes that insulin sensitivity. All those hormones work well together. So when you don't have enough estrogen, that insulin sensitivity, that ability for your insulin to unlock your cells is hampered. And so we can see that in a continuous glucose monitor, which is really helpful for women. Because again, like this, you were saying, they're like, what's going on? This is so crazy. Well, we can show them what's going on inside your body, sort of this proxy system of looking at glucose and, 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 and what's happening when you're eating. Yeah. And you can actually try things out and see what happens as a result. It's kind of, you know, I always say like that I'm wearing a, a Nutrisense CGM right now. And it's so awesome. Cause like it, it's, it's this and like a, a HRV monitor, like a aura ring or something like that are my two favorite tools to actually be able to see what's actually going on, try out different things and see what actually happens in your own body in real time versus I got my HbA1c. And so that's, what's the average of the last three months, but I have no idea like what actually happened in there. I have no idea like what it's like during sleep or how I'm responding to different types of meals and carbs. I have no idea 
how my stress levels are really impacting it. I just know that it's elevated or good, you know, like, but there's no actual information for you to work with. Sometimes people come to us and like, well, what's, what's the perfect, like, what's, what's it supposed to look like? Like, like, and I always say there's no perfect, you know, glucose, um, you know, chart in a day, there's just your better glucose chart in a day nice, because nice. we all respond differently to different carbohydrates. Um, and we're all in different cycles and we all have different body mass, right? So women are always trying to compare themselves to like someone they saw on, you know, an influencer, someone they saw on TikTok, someone they saw on Instagram, like, well, that person has this smoothie every morning and they look amazing. And it's like, right. oh that person's so different from you. <laughs> yeah, you know, Like you, you can't make those health decisions based on what you're seeing, you know, someone showing you, you need to have that data to see how you are responding to what's going on. If you are the mom that does everything for your kids and everything for your spouse, and you're, you know, the great sister and the great friend and the great grandma that usually involves giving, 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 giving. And yeah. I see, you know, while women are naturally nurturing and we love to do it, I see an imbalance in that where it's almost like, well, who am I? And what is my worth if I'm not giving? Like, I don't feel comfortable just like laying here and enjoying and kind of being in that like queen energy. Like we're missing that a little bit is that's a big thing I, I see with women. And I was wondering if you could yeah. hit on some of the more spiritual and belief systems that yeah. are kind of wrecking our women right now. Yeah, absolutely. And I see it a lot. There's this quick fix culture. Mm. We're mm -hmm. accustomed to, you know, you Google something and you have the answer within a split second, right? You take an ibuprofen and maybe the headache is away, you know, gone within 30 minutes. Right. So right. we're in this quick fix space. And so often you know, women will come back to me and they've just been put on the pill. They've just right. been put on a medication and there you go. Your symptom is gone. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, if I'm looking at a tree and the leaves are yellowing or browning because it's diseased and I give you a bucket of green paint and a ladder, you can go create paint those leaves green and say, there you go. It's green again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Did we actually look at where's the quality of the soil and is it is it getting water and light and what's going on here? Right. And so to actually foundationally address cause and not just look for the next quick fix because there's this general tone of I have to give, I have to do, I have to give, I have to do, and somehow worthiness is tied. And you know, I think when it comes to conversations around gender right now, it's so charged Yeah. around concepts of masculine and feminine and pronouns. Right. And for me, I go, all right, if we say egg and sperm, <laughs> if egg represents feminine mm. and sperm represents masculine, we all have masculine and feminine, right? right. And yet an egg matures and ovulates it leaves the ovary and you know what it does it hangs out right hey i am in receivership right who's gonna find me mm -hmm. who's gonna penetrate me and the sperm are out there like running their asses <laughs> off and chasing and fighting their way and me first and they're dying off and they're finding their way right mm -hmm. and so um I feel like there's a general imbalance. Yeah. And most of the women that I work with are very ambitious women. Many of them are entrepreneurs and CEOs and out balling in the world, but they're existing so much in masculine energy. Mm -hmm. um, we, we lose this sense of where's the surrender? Yeah. Where's the receivership? Where's the flow? Where's the intuition? Where's the circular versus linear? Where's mm -hmm. the trust versus predictability, mm. right? Where's the receivership versus doing? Um, and so we think that it's weak to surrender. We've somehow created this pattern where many women have forgotten how to be in full receivership. Mm -hmm. And instead we go, we go, we do, we do, we serve, we serve thinking that that's adding value, but I go, all right, if you're giving from a depleted space yeah. versus giving from a completely filled up 
intuitive, round, robust, vital, alive place, mm -hmm. you look at who you're giving to, what are they actually receiving? Right. Um, right. Yeah, there, there's a um, Quechua word, it's called Aini, A-Y-N-I, Aini. Mm -hmm. And it stands for sacred reciprocity. Nice. And um, what they believe. Hawaiians, Hawaiians are big on that too, as you know, yeah. reciprocity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where, mm -hmm. at least from a, from a Peruvian shamanism or Quechua perspective, when there's an imbalance mm -hmm. in giving and receiving, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, out in nature, the trees breathing in the air that we breathe out and we're breathing in the air that they give us, right? There's mm -hmm. balance. Mm -hmm. And when, when something goes out of balance, they believe that that's where all disease comes from. Mm -hmm. Cancer, wow. depression, anxiety, nice. ailments, right. fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, right. whatever it is, it, it's really stemming from an imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's a lot of space for us to revisit, particularly for women, the power that comes in this, in, in the energy of surrender mm -hmm. and how potent our ability to receive is. I can't emphasize enough how important this is, what you just highlighted. It's a, it's a huge thing that I see also with women yeah. is, um, you know, just being with their family. They, they're like in, going insane kind of, they're like, they cannot allow themselves to sink in and, and just yeah. it physiologically just, relax yep. into the moment with nothing planned, you know, just, I, I, my, I, I, what I counsel them is like, I want you to just sit on the couch and get, like you said, not, I don't want you to have your phone and no game plan at all. And yep. just watch what happens. Your kids will just, they will come like flies to light, you know, moths to light. Like they will just appear and yep. have no game plan. Nothing, you know, it's not like we're going to go do this now and that and blah, blah, blah. And just uh, allow that experience for a little while. Make eye contact with them. Listen and don't have anything to say back. Like just totally, just like totally. Oh, oh. It, hmm. it, I practice this. It's amazing. <laughs> right. It's amazing. I'll just go sit in the chair, turn the fireplace on, maybe bring out some knitting. Right. And I have three young children. And next thing I know, all three of them They're are all in there. the room. Yep. And th they don't need us to be doing anything. They don't even need us to be talking. Yep. But they feel so fed and connected just yep. by the presence mm -hmm. of mom. Mm -hmm.